Hey guys, it's Andy here. Today we're just doing a quick episode on basically the maths behind running your home systems and your grows on a inverter. Uh, we talk a little bit about lead acid batteries, lithium batteries, uh, all the different types of batteries, the types of inverters. We don't go into very, very technical details, so it's easy enough for everyone to follow along. And hopefully this will help you at home setting up your backup system for your grow or for whatever you'll need to run through load shedding or a rolling blackout. Let's get into it. Dean, you've obviously had some personal experience with growing during load shedding and batteries and inverters specifically. Yeah, it's uh, become, uh, it's got so bad that it's actually to a point now that it's kind of impossible to run a successful grow without some kind of backup. You know, small backups work, but uh, a lot of guys are now having to really look at uh, upscaling their investment into sort of battery and inverter side of things. Uh, so yeah, it's a super important uh, talking mm. point, especially for us South African growers, because it's uh, not going away anytime soon. And uh, it really does add to the the barrier to entry of getting into you know into indoor growing. You have to have a backup. You have to know what you're doing. You're having aging. Uh, you know, batteries don't last forever, so that's another point as well. So yeah, it's uh, uh, once again a super important topic with relation to being a South African South African grower. Yeah, it's a uh, it's unfortunate and uh, but something we have all have to deal with. So today I just want to put some context in this. Obviously, the I've got a little presentation. I'm going to show you guys in a second. But with regards to this, it's not an exact science at this level. You know, you'd have to reach out to either us. We can put you in contact with someone who can set you up with a proper system if you are at home, or you can try figure out the math uh, for yourself. So generally, I've geared these calculations for a uh, maybe four or five plant grow with like a, a power consumption of like 500 watts at its peak. And that kind of means you can get a commercially like a, a a retail available inverter and a retail available light and and or battery charger and things like that as opposed to where you can get these like commercial size systems where it becomes like a whole different ballpark and then also to add some more context to that there's different things that go into it like for instance batteries that you choose i mean this is like a massive topic that is pretty detailed but in general you get things like lead acid those like big batteries that you like kind of look like the size and shape that you would see in your car those are going to be so heavy and they don't last as long and they but however they're cheap whereas you also get now lithium batteries that are used as like inverters uh, that that are used for inverter systems it's the same type you guys get in your cell phones and they are way more expensive but last longer and you get more cycles out of them and a cycle is just like charge to flat to charge because uh dean you uh, what are you running at the moment you've got uh, gel batteries i, I think a, no i'm running lead acids um mm. my infrastructure is aging Deep cycle, a bit. Yeah. uh yeah so i've got uh, uh a system running uh two i have a 24 volt inverter a 1440 watt inverter 24 volts i'm running two hour uh lead acids and then for the uh energy wise grow which i'm also busy with at the moment i uh, um have a another inverter which is a mm -hmm. 720 watt and uh, that's a 12 volt and i'm running a single a single battery on that um however my my infrastructure is aging a bit you know the lead acids are rated for around mm. uh, two years. And uh, even though I've used mine incredibly, incredibly conservatively over the two year period, I've never run more than 300 and 300 watts or so on my on my bigger system. Mm. You know, uh, they're 1.6 years old now and they are now, especially after the sort of heavy stage six load shedding, they're starting to lose quite a bit of their efficiency. So I'm kind of in line to get some new ones soon. But uh, I'm going to kind of stretch it out and uh, I'm personally saving up for a, a bigger system just to sort of put my house on it and then to obviously have more sort mm -hmm. of consistency in the grow, power more stuff. So yeah, my next upgrade will probably be a proper commercial system. But uh, up until now, it's really it's really worked to, to sort of mitigate some effects. I'm not getting the results mm -hmm. I really want, you know. But uh, I'm not getting Hermy and plants are staying in flower. So it's definitely working for me, for me currently. Mm -hmm. 
Something nice that you mentioned earlier is the another thing with regards to the batteries and the type of batteries. And and if you guys want to see the calculations, you can also jump forward a bit. But uh, just you know, we want to give you as much context. But there is something you also need to factor in now that as load shedding is getting worse is with regards to the battery charge time. And the battery charge time means that essentially you need to charge that thing up before the next round of load shedding hits. And at times, you know, if you're getting hit three times in a day and you're maybe drawing your battery down 70, 80 percent you know that maybe means that you're not going to charge it up as quick lead acid and gel batteries don't charge as quick as the lithium so uh, lithium's got those like supercharged capabilities where you might be able to get it up to like 90 percent within an hour depending on the size of the battery and the capacity of the battery charger but yeah those are also factors that that weigh in and i think maybe the market's probably going to move towards these lithium batteries soon because of just like how quickly they need to get them charged and i think obviously because of the demand the price is coming down uh, of lithium but i, I think to, during covid there was like a lithium sort shortage uh globally so the prices went up and yeah that the <laughs> chip shortages and stuff like that whereas the lead acid is very like standard but yeah important super super important to factor in uh dean any other overarching things that uh that i may have missed that we just want to factor in and caution size of the yeah, grow the, battery the rating of the inverter doesn't if your if an inverter is rated at 1400 watts it doesn't mean you can go and put 1400 watts onto it so like we'll get mm. into that mathematics now but uh, don't look at uh, when you're if you are doing some home shopping and you're wanting to get a small system you know if you go for like that the one of the most popular ones online is that misa 720 watt inverter you get mm. it you know all over the place but you can't that doesn't instantly mean you can go and plug 720 yeah. watts on it you know this is the inverter is basically the tool that charges and flips over when the power cuts but the the thing here that is most important is your is your battery. So uh, mm. you know the well, when you're getting into it and you don't really know much about the different uh, kinds of things, you'll say, okay, cool, you know, oh, 720 watts, I can run my whole grow on this. But you'd need to account for the um, you need to account for how much battery backup that you that you have on it to see how much you can how much you can draw, and that's where the math obviously does does come in. And uh, you know, a lot of the time what guys do is they don't actually aim to power their whole grow on a smaller system you know the more commercial systems mm. that are going to cost you 50k plus guys are aiming to power their whole grow um but that's obviously a massive barrier to entry uh, on these smaller systems you're probably going to be aiming to power some light and some environmentals mm. uh, so like maybe your extractor fan as well as a backup light rather than powering you know your whole your normal 700 watt light or whatever you're running in your in your tent so it's more of mm. like a, a building up a backup system over running a your system on a on a backup yeah no 100 percent uh i think as well one last thing that that before we jump into the math uh also the diehards you know it will be there for the math and i don't want to scare everyone off with it um is just with the with the with the battery inverter system there's a battery there's three parts to it: battery the inverter and then the battery charger uh and what's nice when dean mentioned those mesa inverters like this was like a sort of a revelation to me is like they come with a switch with them so that means as soon as the battery is uh, as soon as the power's cut, that battery is going to, that's going to switch. The inverter is going to switch automatically from battery, from wall power to battery power. And like that even happens, you know, we could have load shedding now and it's, it's just, everything carries on. It's, I think there's, you get speed of the switch point something milliseconds, uh, and a good switch will be able to do it in fewer milliseconds. Like a hospital's got to be really quick, goes off. And then the batteries kick in within a few sec, uh, within a few milliseconds, so that the lights don't even, you know, maybe see a flicker. Uh, so yeah, that that's that's I think the, the general concept of uh, getting into the battery load shedding backup solution. Unfortunately, I wish it was easier, uh, but it's <laughs> it's quite a bit complicated. Okay, so having a look at some of these this, this math here, uh, you guys will have access to this. You can make a copy, and then once you have a copy, you can play around with it. But yeah, the the idea is not really to. I'm not going to do hundreds of different calculations. I just want to draw attention to inverter size which is basically we've got a 720 watt inverter that doesn't mean you can use 720 watts you always want to try aim for like i wouldn't even try push it to 75 percent of this you know i'd say 500 would be the max because the watt on a on items isn't always just like a flat line you know like a kettle is going to go like this and then it's going to spike and then it'll go down and then it'll spike again so it, you know things change 
And that means, yeah, your watts isn't always going to be stationary and you don't want to be pushing the inverters over because then you can blow fuses and things like that. Battery voltage, just check that out in whatever battery you are buying. And over here, I had a little calculation ready, but I'm just going to leave that for now. I was working off the ask. So there's two parts to this. There is amp hour and time. So amp hour is how you measure your battery capacity. Pretty much every battery you'll see is going to have a amp hour rating on it. And that's kind of, there's other ways to measure its, its capacity, but I, I think amp hour is becoming the, the standard. And if you want to work out how much amp hours you need, you need to know your watts. You obviously need to get a, a some sort of a power meter. They available everywhere these days. You just plug it into your wall and you plug in your appliance. And you can see how much your draw is coming into that. So let's say in this example, we've got 150 watt draw. That's not a lot. It's probably enough for maybe a light and a fan, um, a small light and a fan. And yeah, not not a terrible amount. I think, Dean, what do you rate? A, a light fan? Uh, like the basic yeah, well, essentials. Most, if we, like this, most of these systems is going to be for like a one by one or a one point two meter grow mm -hmm. tent, you know. So there you're running a uh, probably a hundred and a hundred to hundred and fifty watt in a uh, hundred to hundred and fifty mil inline fan. So there you're looking mm. at uh, for your extraction system, you're looking at about 80, 80 watts or so. So with the mm -hmm. 150 watt calculation, you could give yourself your extractor fan at 80 watts, and then you'd have 70 watts of light left over, which is mm -hmm. pretty pretty decent, you know. So mm. light and a, or you could go for lesser light as long as it's something with a decent spread area, and then you could do your extractor fan, one small oscillating fan. Uh, most of those oscillating fans, those small clip-on ones, are around 35 watts, and then you can obviously you'll you'll still have an additional around 35 watts mm. to to add to to add to lighting. That's kind of the and three most important things to mm. to run. But I must say the light is important, but but nearly by far the most important thing is making sure that your extractor fan does still run during load shedding. Mm -hmm. I've run some tests and your humidity on a two hour period on a grow tent hits a hundred percent nearly it's 90 something percent. So you're getting mm. massive swings in the load shedding period. And then that obviously brings powdery mildew galore. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, one of the most important things is accounting for your extractor extractor system to, to keep running. 100%. So yeah, let's say, I mean, you guys could get, gear this up and you could, you know, you could do the math and say, cool, I want to run two, 250 or, or whatnot. In this game, I'm going to leave it 150 for simplicity's sake. Uh, so I've got time that's generally two and a half hours, uh, which is the standard load shedding or, or power, uh, power outages. And the watts is the, the draw. We've got a 12 volt battery. If you guys are running things in series and parallel, just take note of this. But uh, for the most part, they are the 12 volt batteries coming standard. And this is the, the one thing that, that I haven't spoken about yet. Well, we, we briefly touched on, call it efficiency is what the E stands for. I don't know if that's the right word, but essentially you don't want to, you don't want to use a hundred percent of your battery. These, uh, uh, these deep cycle lead acids, gel batteries, the lithium, uh, the lithium separate, but these big lead acids, they don't like to be charged all the way down to naught because it's a chemical reaction. And when all the chemicals be re, you know reacted it's hard to unreact them when you charge them and you know there is loss in life and like dean was saying the batteries don't last forever lithium's last a little bit longer and i think if you were running a lithium i would be much more comfortable to bring it down to maybe let's say you want to you can draw up to 70 percent of the battery that would also be fine um yeah so you could you could change that on the fly but we don't want to use more than half in this case for our setup just we want to preserve the life of, of the lead acid batteries. So running the math, two and a half hours times 150 watts, 375, 12 volts times your your efficiency. And I mean, you could do the math however you want, but you're going to need a 62.5 amp hour battery. And this means if you're just running 150 watts, that you are only going to need, that you're only going to use half of this. So you should have 50% capacity. Bear in mind, six to 12 to 18 months later, this is not going to be the case. Uh, you're probably going to have a 60, you're still going to have, let's say a 62.5 amp hour battery, but you're most certainly not going to be drawing just half. You'll be probably at about 18 months. You're going to be drawing 
nearly everything on that um yeah and another point on that the, mm. the a lot of the inverters come built in with like a standard kind of redundancy mm. so like for this specific inverter we're talking about which would be that sort of uh, 720 watt mesa it uh, will cut it will uh shut off at 30 percent capacity on the batteries so that's 62.5 percent that 62.5 amp hour would technically be a 100 amp hour battery on the inverter because you only mm. have availability of 70 amp hours from a 100 amp hour battery and then also you're mm. dealing with your with your aging your rapid aging which is another which is another issue so there are some redundancies at play but you need to play even further on top of those redundancies because we have you know it's not a power cut every now and then we're dealing with sort of rolling blackouts every single day a couple times yeah. a day and i mean if yeah if there's uh places where there's longer uh you know countries watching there where there's longer load shedding period uh you know blackouts it's uh important to factor those in because your lifespan of your battery is just going to get worse and worse and then you're expecting 105 amp hours or whatever and you're actually only getting 80 percent uh you know you, you've got to be aware of these things and that, that is why you know we we tend not to get too involved with these calculations if the clients come in we can give the general advice um and consultation but you're gonna have you know there's so many factors to this that you have to yeah, that you have to calibrate and work in. So inversely, I've taken the same formula, flipped it around a bit, and you can just work out how you know how long you're gonna last because we have two and a half hours. So like most people kind of go, okay, this is my load, um, my consumption, and I've got this, you know, I've got a said battery. How long is it gonna last me? And they kind of want to just make sure it's gonna last two and a half hours. Uh, also not factoring any, uh, also factoring in, I've called it discharge here, but let's say it's the same efficiency that I was talking about earlier. Uh, you only want to discharge 50% of the light. Uh, in this case, you're drawing hundred Watts. So therefore we're going to last 3.75 hours on, on a 62.5 amp hour battery at, at running to 50%, uh, draw. So that's basically. <laughs> that's kind of essentially it um there's obviously all those other factors that you guys can work in uh feel free to grab your and sheet and play around with it yes yeah i also think most lithium ions are standard 24 volt bat uh, batteries i don't think you get mm. them in in 12 volts that's another thing to consider if you are mm. going for a if you are going for a lithium ion which is definitely the advised uh the cost is far more but you're looking at a five year i think it's a five year lifespan versus like a two-year lifespan which then it does, yeah. uh, it uh, and quicker charges, lighter battery. You know, uh, it's uh, definitely the way to go. But if you're in a pickle right now and you can and you have little to draw, then the the lead acid or the or the gel does just does make sense. But uh, they, they are super 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 heavy. Like I picked up a gel battery for the first time the other day, and it's like even heavier than <laughs> than the lead acids. Like nearly put my back out picking it out. So. There's there's so many factors at play, but I think these I think this kind of knowledge, like lighting knowledge for a grower, you know, backup mm. knowledge for a grower is, is is imperative in in South Africa. You have to have some understanding of how to back up your system, because mm. I mean, uh, you know, if if we're chatting to people these days and people are asking us questions, you know, how do I get in? How what do I need and and stuff like that, uh, we're basically telling people not even to waste their time unless they unless they Ready. have mm. priced in a backup system because you can't you, it's it's basically impossible to do it without a without a backup system these days unfortunately especially if mm. we're going to be sitting in stage four five six blackouts in south africa and like on stage six blackout you're getting sort of nearly 12 hours of of darkness a, a day eight to 12 hours which is uh you know, it's it's ridiculous. Mm. No, it's a hundred percent. It's 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 something you guys have to factor in. It's something that we all have to consider. And like you said, it's it's uh, the science here today is is like you know with with lighting, for instance. There's so many things that you know go beyond the obvious. You know, we don't just look at lights with just the watts and the things like that. You got to look at the efficiency, efficiency, the power readings, the you know how long they're going to last, uh, the degradation. Um, so the same things applies to your backup systems and your nutrients and your feeding and your IPM schedules. They, you know, you can get quite technical on it. Uh, so this is just a simplified version. Uh, hopefully it'll help some of you guys out there. And I think that uh, is about it for us today. Uh, thanks for always for watching and for supporting the show. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys in another episode. Peace, guys. Peace, guys.